In today's video, we're going to begin the setup of our user defaults to save important values and incorporate them into our opening scene in our game scene. We'll also start to track scoring when we shoot the invaders, as well as the lives remaining when we are killed. Sound like something you're interested in? Come on in to the lab. Hey developers, I'm Michael, the architect. Welcome back into my lab where experimentation forms creation. I love getting your feedback on these videos, so tap the thumbs up button if you're enjoying it and leave a comment below. At the end, if this is the kind of content you want to continue to see, click the subscribe button and click the notification bell to be informed of new videos. Ready to start coding? Let's get experimenting. Okay, welcome back into Xcode. So today we're gonna to get a lot of work done. We're gonna add in some of our scores, our high scores and our, our lives, and we're gonna track those things and we're gonna use user defaults. So I'm gonna start in our constants.swift file. And here we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new enum under our enum k. And this is just gonna be enum user defaults. And we'll leave it like that. And we're just gonna do some static lets in here. So we're gonna do a static let score. And this will be a string. And we call score. Static let high score. Be a string. And this will equal high score. And a static let lives. And this will be a string as well, will equal lives. Like I said, I like to do this only because it makes life easier. We don't have to take these variables out again later on. We can just use the dot notations to make these things work. So that's all we really need to do in our constants file. Everything's good here. So let's go ahead. We're going to move into our opening scene and we're going to look at the opening scene dot swift. So what we really want to do here is we want to show our high score on this screen and we want to make sure when we go into the game we're using the proper defaults for our start of a game so let's go ahead here at the top and right up under the properties let's go ahead and we're going to create a var high score we're going to make this an integer and we're going to make it equal to zero we'll just start off with that now we're going to come down and we'll go, let's add, a, we'll do add this one here right above it. We're going to let a high score label. This is going to be an SK label node. And we're going to want this just a normal font. So let's go k.fonts.normal. Not like our bold font. This is just going to be normal. So we got this all set up. What we're going to want to do is come down in here into the did move function and we're going to want to do a create, let's do create high score label and make a function for that. That function obviously doesn't exist. So I'm going to come down here into our node methods and let's create a function, create high score label. And that hopefully should take care of our error up here. Yep, there it goes. Good shape there. And for this, it's really fairly simple. Um, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do the high score label dot position. And we're going to position this at a CG point. We'll do 384 and 914. Do a high score label, our Z position. Remember we did this in an enum earlier, so we're just going to do our k.layers.labels. That way it's on the same level every time. Our high score label uh, dot name. And this is going to just equal high score. That way we can refer to it if we need to later. Our high score label dot text. 
Now this is important because we're gonna to need to add to this later on, but for right now, we're gonna make it four zeros. I always want it to be four zeros. And then we're gonna do an add child and we'll add the high score label. And then I'll add it straight into our program without any problems. Now we'll head back up into our methods. Let's check everything out the way it should be. We have our high score label here. And the big thing we really wanna do is we want to maintain this high score all the way along. So we're going to use user defaults to do this. So let's go ahead here and let's do a high score. And this is going to be equal to our user defaults dot standard. integer for key and what key do we want to use we want to use the key that we already created our k dot user defaults dot high score that's why it's so easy to have that enum you don't have to remember how you spelled it did you put a capital letter in it did you not put a capital letter it just makes life easier just using the dot notation so that'll go ahead and create it there so we have it set to zero in the beginning, just as a variable. As soon as we do our did move, as soon as the screen opens up, we set it to whatever is in, in that user defaults. If it's nothing in there, then it just is a zero. If there's something in there, then it gives it whatever it is. And the last part of this that we really wanna do before we move any further, when we go into the game and we do our tap on the start button, we wanna make sure that our score is set to zero and that our lives are set to two. That gives us, the, by setting the lives equal to two, that gives us one player on the screen and two additional players. So we actually get three lives in the game. And we'll play with that later on because we might give us some bonus lives or anything like that. But for right now, let's go ahead and under this tapped method, under uh, if the tapped and if it equals start, let's go here and before we move on to the next screen, let's set our defaults values for a new game. And this is going to be very simple. We're going to use user default dot standard dot set. And we want to set a value and a key. So the value we want to set is zero. And the key we want to set this to is our k dot user defaults dot score. That way, when we go before we even go into the game, we've already set our user defaults to zero. Whatever we get in the game will be added to it, but we start here. We'll do our user defaults again dot standard dot set. And this one we're going to go ahead and set to two for key and the key is going to be our k.userdefaults.lives and that way we have our one player on the screen and we have two additional lives this all gets set before we go into the next screen and that's all we really need to do in our opening scene we have everything set up ready to go and hopefully we should see what we want to see let me make sure I didn't miss anything here and I did of course so the final thing we want to do on this screen, you know, we when we come into this, we set our high score to zero. We then turn around and we set our high score to a value when the screen shows up. But this doesn't change our text. Our text is set to zero, zero, zero. So we need to somehow set this high score label to match what actually is going on. So as we do this, when we set our high score, it needs somehow to tell that high score to change the, the high score label. So let's go up here to our high score. We're gonna add in here a did set method. This is a great little, a great little function to go inside of this. Underneath the did set, it's really easy. We just want our score label dot text is what we're changing. And we want this to be equal to a string because it is a string after all. And we'll do a format. And the format I'm gonna use is a %04D. 
basically it'll give us four digits. 0000, zero, zero, zero is what we start with, but it'll always just have the four digits. And then for the argument, what do we want to show in this? We want to show our high score. So now anytime the high score gets set anywhere, for instance, it got set here using the user defaults, it'll automatically call this did set method and it'll update our text string. That way our high score label is always up to date and always saying what it should say. And that should be everything we need to do on this screen. So let's go ahead and move on to our game scene. And we're gonna do some of the same kind of stuff in this screen. We'll go ahead right from the top and let's go ahead and put in some properties. We're gonna put this under the other properties and keep it away from our invader stuff. So we're gonna do of our score, and this is an integer equal to zero. We're gonna do of our I score, make this an integer equal to zero. And we're gonna change our lives remaining here that we played around with earlier just for just so we could test things out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a refactor rename. This is a cool little function inside of Xcode. We'll wait for this thing to catch up here and everywhere it has lives remaining. We'll just do lives. Change that and I changed it everywhere. And let's go ahead and make this equal to zero for right now. Understand that it won't work completely the way we want it to yet but this will get us going. And then inside our did move method, before we start creating everything and doing all these methods, let's go ahead and update our variables that we just created. So we're gonna do score, and it's gonna equal our user defaults, dot standard, dot integer for key, and the score is going to be k dot user defaults dot score. Let's set our high score equal to our user defaults again. Dot standard dot integer for key. This is going to be our k dot user defaults dot high score. And our lives are going to be equal to our user defaults dot standard dot integer for key. K dot user defaults dot lives. And that gets all those set up the way we need them to be. So now we're gonna have to figure out how to change these values. And the way we wanna do this, so inside the did begin, this is where we're getting our physics, where we're getting our collisions. This is the stuff we built in the last video. And under this, let's go down to the player weapon, because this is the one we really care about. When the player weapon hits something, we wanna add to the score. So let's go ahead into here. We're gonna go down into, let's see here. If the player weapon, if it hits a blocker and invader weapon, there's no score going on with that. If it hits a player though, or if it hits a, an invader, this is where we're gonna wanna make some changes. So the player weapon hit an invader here. We'll create an explosion later on. We'll take care of that when we clean everything up. But for right now, Let's say we're going to leave the total invaders minus equals one. And here we're going to add to our score. This will be a plus equals. And this is going to be a ternary operator. So let's do our first node dot name. And if this is invader A, then we want it to add 30. If the first node dot name is equal to invader B, then we want it to equal 20 points. Otherwise, we want it to equal 10 points. And that'll add to our score. Now we need to go in and add in our labels so we can show our score, our high score, and our lives. So we're going to go back up here to the properties, and up here at the top. And we'll go ahead and add this right into the very top. So we're gonna do a let score label. This is gonna be an SK label node. 
And we'll just do this with a normal font. So k.fonts.normal. And we're gonna do a let a high score label. Go on SK label node. And again, the k.fonts.normal. And we're gonna do our let our lives label. Go on SK label node. K.fonts.normal. That sets up our labels, but we have to create these labels somewhere. So we're going to come down into our did move method again. We've already created our user defaults. Here we'll create our particles, then we'll create our barriers. Let's go ahead and create our, our labels right here. And it should start to complain because this doesn't exist anywhere. So let's go ahead and we will copy that. There's the complaint. And let's go all the way down to our bottom under our node methods. And we'll go, here's where we created our bar, our particles and our barriers. So let's keep these all in order. Let's do a new funk, create labels. And here we're just gonna create the three labels. So you've seen me do this a couple of times before. So let's go ahead and I am just going to copy some things in here to make life a little easier. First one we're going to create is a score label and here's the position. We're going to put it at 123.5 and 912. Um, we're going to set it Z position. We're just going to call it label. We're really not going to have to go back to this at any point. The score is going to equal our user defaults. And we're going to add it to the ch add child, add that score label on. And then we'll come back over. I'm going to do another copy here. Let's get our high score. Come on in here. We'll copy that and paste that in. So same thing. We're going to set its position, its Z position. We're going to call it label. We'll set the high score and then we'll add the add child to the scene. So that'll take care of that. And then our final one, we're going to add our lives label back in here, copy that. And once again, same thing. The only difference with this one here is I'm going to add the position, the Z position. I'm going to name it label just like the rest. But you'll notice here that I changed this up. I made the font color red and I made the font size 18. That's because this is going to sit on the right hand side of the screen where we placed the, the static image of our player cannon. And this is going to sit right over the top of it. Then we set our lives again to the user defaults and we're good to go. Like I showed you in the last screen or in, in the opening scene.swift, just because we're setting these things, you'll notice I'm not setting the text anywhere in here. So we have to go about doing that. And we're going to go back up into our variables here at the top and where we have our lives, our score and our high score. So let's go ahead and I'm going to rearrange these a little bit just because I can. Do that. We'll do our, our score, our high score, and then our lives. So for our score, we're going to do a did set again. And under this, we want the score label to equal a string and the format and the arguments. So the format that we want, we're going to do the four characters again. So we're going to present the 04D. And what do we want it to show? We want it to show our score. That's easy. And anytime this changes, we want to make sure that value gets written back into this is our score label dot text. There we go. That fix that should fix that error, hopefully. Yep. So like I said, we want to write this back into our user defaults. So right here, let's go ahead and write it right back into user defaults. So our we'll do our user defaults dot standard dot set. 
And what do we want to set? We want to set the score. And where do we want to set it? I'm going to do for key k.userdefaults.score. And that takes care of that. Now the last piece with the score, we do want to do if the score is greater than our current high score, then we want the high score to equal our score. And that will actually trigger our high score to get clicked over. So that should take care of that one. Now let's go into our high score. We're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to do a did set. And here we're going to do our high score label dot text. And this is going to equal a string. We'll do the format. And for this one, we're going to do the same thing the present zero four D. And where do we want, what value do we want in this? We want our high score. And anytime this changes, we want to make sure our user defaults get written again. So we're going to go ahead and we want to write our high score into our k.userdefaults.highscore. And that'll take care of that one. And then the last one we have is our lives and do basically the same thing one more time Do a did set method here. We're going to do our lives label dot text, we'll do a string, we'll do the format. So for right now, let's go ahead and do a percent zero one D and that'll just be one digit basically. And let's go ahead and we're going to put that into our lives. And same thing again here, our user defaults dot standard dot set. And we want to set our lives. And let's do four key. K dot user defaults dot lives. And that should take care of everything. Now, we should be able to play the game. We should see on our opening screen, on our opening scene, we should see a new high score set in there. When we go to our game scene, that high score should move over. As we shoot aliens, you should see the score totaling up. If we get killed, you should see that value go down and hopefully everything works well. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. I'm still using the iPad Pro 11 inch fourth gen on the simulator. So we're gonna go ahead and hit play on this. Brings up our screen. Here's our simulator. And we have a problem right up front. So this is not right, this $04D. So let's go back here to our opening scene and see where I goofed up here. That's why I put in a dollar sign here. There should be a percent zero four D. Okay. Now let's try it one more time. Hopefully you can get this right. And there we go. I had a high score. I played around with this a little bit, 270 points. So we have that set in here. We're not showing our lives. We're not showing our score on this screen. I don't intend to in the future either. So we're going to go ahead and when we hit start, we should see the new screen show up with a score of zero, the lives of two, and a high score sitting in the middle. So we hit start, and there we go. We have a two here. We have the 270. Now we're down to one because we just died. So let's shoot some of these guys. And you can see the score tallying up. because I'm playing on a simulator. I can't do much more than this. I don't like how this came out though, so we need to go back and take a look at this and see if I did something wrong here. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna take a look at our game scene.sks because this is where we created our static labels. Let's take a look and see. Bring this 
down a little bit. If we take a look at our sprite here, let's check and see. I want to go ahead to our properties of this. Where do we have this player cannon sitting? Our Z position is sitting at zero. Let's go ahead and back this to, we'll just do a minus 10. And this should push it behind. I, I'm wondering if for some reason we're just getting it pushed, our label is getting pushed behind this. If we go back to our constants and look, our label should be at zero. So that could have been what was happening because the labels were at zero and because the sprite itself was originally at zero, this sprite, they were just overlapping each other anytime there was a change. So hopefully now if we hit play on this, we go ahead and hit start. There's our two sitting up there pretty easy. That's good. All right. There it goes. And it's staying in front now. Now it's not falling behind. A couple of little errors today. Got through them, worked through them pretty well. So I think this is a great place to stop. And we'll get really close to being able to finish this game out. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. If you've had any problems following along, I've left a link for the saved project in the description below. Don't forget, you will have to download the sound files from classicgaming.cc and the extra ground image file from kenny.nl, as they are not included in the saved project. I've left links for both below in the description box. Finally, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment for the games you would like to see me recreate in a future series, Click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to get notified of new videos as they come out. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you back in the Architect Labs.